Hello, my YouTube friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a very, very, very special guest for you today. Um, hopefully you have seen our other shows or shows um, with Larry, and he has a podcast called Living with Louie. Is that correct? That is correct. And Louie needs to be spelled L-E-W-I because, uh, um, believe it or not, AI will spell it L-O-U-I-S. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, so, so Larry here is, can I, I can call you a friend now, right? We've known each yes. other long enough. We're friends. Okay, yes. good. So Larry is a, a very dear friend of mine and he is living with Lewy body dementia. And um, we have decided to partner up and do some shows, but he has this amazing podcast. If you have not seen it, um, I do have links to it. I'll have links down below and also throughout my channel, Facebook page, everywhere. You need to check it out. You need to watch all of his podcasts because they're they're just absolutely amazing. And yeah. we have collaborated because we can see things from two different perspectives. Right, Larry? Yes, I yes. I would and I would tell you that uh, my podcasts are at the moment audio only so they can be heard on any of your podcast listening platforms iheart spotify apple all of those um we haven't made the leap into uh youtube as of yet um that's something that we're looking at in the future but uh i i would have to tell you that um i find our conversations extremely interesting because we are on both, we are on opposite sides of the lens of life, if you will. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's interesting to have both perspectives. Yes, our conversations have been, it really enlightened me as well. And hopefully the viewers too, because that's why we're both here. That's exactly and, right. And you yep. know what? It, what? And I will say this, that the popularity of your program, the popularity of my program, are testament to the fact that there's a lot of people out there that need to hear um, that they're not alone and that their situation is not uh, hopeless, that there are ways to get a more positive, um, uh, more quality of life in, uh, in a situation that may otherwise not look that way. I couldn't have said it better myself. And so all of you viewers out there, you know what you need to do. You need to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our upcoming podcasts because Larry and I have already planned out several more shows that are going to just, they're just going to blow your mind. But today we're going to concentrate on communication because if you don't have good communication, you're not going to have anything but troubles. Um, and Larry and I want to help you with those troubles. Right, Larry? Correct. We don't, we want to uh, lessen the amount of trouble that you have to go through. <laughs> yes. On both sides. <laughs> right. On both sides. Because I've always said that my mission is really to relieve the burden of suffering for the person with dementia. But in order for me to do that, I have to go through you. You're the one. You're the one that I need to connect with, and you're the one that I need to help to make that happen for your person with dementia. So I actually end up helping both people, but I ultimately started out wanting to serve the person with dementia. So, um, but it's a twofer, and I I couldn't be happier about that. So we're glad you're here, and with that, we are going to go ahead and dive into the show. You know, I the thing that I find extremely interesting about our meeting and our discussions is that you are on the caregiver perspective, and here I am on the, on the other total opposite side of that camera, on the other side of the lens, looking back, and and so that's I think where there's a great deal of value in our conversations. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent, and. And Larry, when, when we talk about communication, I mean, everything around us 
if you think about it, involves communication. Everything. Yes. Whether... Talking to people, um, anything that you that you read, street signs, um, you know, signs on grocery stores. I mean, communication is is literally everything. And so when when a person loses that, like you mentioned, that's where the frustration and the anger can come in. So we as the care partners, if we can figure out the communication piece, which is definitely way more than, you know, some snippets here and there, um, you need like a real full training on that. But but once you grasp that communication piece and have a really good handle on it and you know what to say and what not to say, then you will reduce behaviors because behaviors are really a reaction to something. So by being able to communicate more successfully, we're going to greatly reduce the number of behaviors or reactions for people makes perfect sense to me i will tell you that um over this past weekend i was seeing spiders crawling across my pillow and i told my wife i said i said honey i said there's something crawling across my pillow and she came in and she said honey uh, I'm sorry you, that that, but there's really there's there's nothing there, and I was like, okay, but it was the calm demeanor wasn't. You're crazy. You're seeing things or anything like that. There was not. In other words, like you said, the communication was more in a positive manner, and I guess I'm still at a point where I can kind of logically. Um, segregate the things that are mind tricks versus what's reality. Yeah. But that one was very, very vivid. And, and, uh, you know, she just said, no. So, and even just her entering into that exchange with me took my, excuse me, took my mind off of, what my what I thought I was seeing mm. concentrated more on what she was saying and it wasn't there. So mm. you know, I it's all I can tell you. Yeah. It, I've had I've had other clients um actually like bugs and spiders and things like that are very, very common um hallucinations for people with Lewy body dementia. And I I actually do specific teaching on how to handle communication during um, hallucinations and the steps to take and the words to use um, and how to how to diffuse that and how to how to pretty much make it disappear and go away. It's it's really remarkable. Um, With, the without students saying just love it. And they they use the they use the techniques and it's just it's brilliant it's just brilliant. You know, uh, we started this on communication and behavior, and we thought we did the communication part, but they are so intertwined that they we are. can't not help but talk about both at, together. I agree. Um, and and even though that was what we had said, we're going to talk about communication. We'll talk <laughs> about behavior later. Is there's actually no way to avoid it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. And um, you know, it's it's would you like me to um tell you a little bit about um like what percentages communication is? You can you can share that with me and my audience, but uh yes, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, it's really it's very interesting. So and this is and this is for someone who's cognitively intact. So this isn't even a person with dementia. Uh, but seven percent of communication is our words. Only seven percent. So like somebody's gonna understand you, only seven percent from what you say. 
55% is your body language. I was just going to say. And 38% is your facial expressions. Right. So so 90% or more of communication is As... nonverbal. Right. So you can say something as sweet as can be, but if you've got a scowl on your face, it's not going to work. Or if you're standing there with your arms crossed, you know, you could say something as sweet as could be. You could tell somebody you love them, but if you've got this, you know, nasty body language going on, you know, you got your hands on your hips and you're tapping your foot and you're kind of what? looking up in the sky, it's not going to, it's not going to work. So there's, there's so much to communication. There's so much. And, and yet, while not difficult, it does take a little practice. And, you know, it took me 15 years to perfect my models that I share with people now. And I've taken that 15 years and I've smooshed it all together to make it so easy for people. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily hard steps, but you've got to implement them all and you've got to do it correctly or it's going to backfire. And, you know, I don't know about you, Larry, but usually the more upset I get, the longer it takes me to come down. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. quite true. Yeah. Uh, so if, if, if we, as the care person are trying, trying our best, but the person with dementia is getting more and more agitated it's obvious that we're doing something wrong. And so that's that's what I love teaching. I love teaching people how to diffuse that situation as soon as it starts so that instead of it escalating, we're, we're bringing it back down instead. Because that's what we all want. We all want peace. We all want to be happy. Um, and, and it is definitely achievable. It really is.